Now, if you're like me, I know you hate it when people try to sell you a dream. Basically, make shit sound sweeter than really, really is. You done up, he's slowed up, like power. I power my head. These niggas pretend my bitch. Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Jay, man. Now, I know a lot of you have been wanting me to put another video out. Well, today is today, man. Now, my past two videos, I basically gave you guys the tools on how to get started, as well as some tips on how to book loads just for your box truck. But today, I kind of want to do something different, man. Kind of want to give you guys some real fucking talk. Now, if you're like me, I know you hate it when people try to sell you a dream. Basically, make shit sound sweeter than really, really is. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but they don't tell you the real facts that, hey, it might be some obstacles that you might face that might hinder you or even discourage you from wanting to go through with the process, man. I kind of feel like... I'm, I did that with you guys. Not necessarily sold you guys a dream, but I've only told you the good things about being in the box truck industry, like how much money you make and stuff like that. But I haven't told you that there will be obstacles that you will face that you need to be prepared for because I wasn't, over these past six months of being in business, I've learned and I've gained knowledge on how to face those uh, obstacles and avoid them as much as possible. And I want to give you guys those tools so you can be prepared for that. Now, the video says these are the keys to basically making sure that your box truck is successful right now and successful in the future, man. Now, before we get into that, if this is your first time on my channel, please like and subscribe. I promise you will not be disappointed. If you, if you don't, it's all good. As long as you get something out of this video, that's all that matters. And for those who have liked and subscribed to my past videos, man, I appreciate all the love. I, pr I appreciate everybody that's been reaching out to me on my social media, asking me questions. It's an honor for me to be answering answering them to for you guys and as well as i'm getting phone calls from strangers from youtube like it's dope seeing how much passion you guys have behind this and how you really want to get this shit done man it just shows me that you are really hungry man and i wish you guys nothing but the best now with that being said let's get into this video now man. the first thing i want to go over is having a dispatcher man i feel as though if you have one truck or two trucks you should dispatch you or your driver you would save a lot of money man now, uh, some dispatchers might charge you a percentage or somebody or some dispatchers might charge you a set rate. When I first started out, I had a dispatcher. She charged me two hundred and twenty five dollars, man. She was trash as fuck. When I say trash as fuck, like she wasn't professional. Like when I try to speak business and conduct business with her, like she always makes sexual remarks. Like she was focused on everything but getting me good loads. You know what I'm saying? And I had I set a goal for her every week, which is three thousand dollars minimum just to start off. I was like, hey. Uh, can you do that? And like, she would gas me up, basically sell me a dream saying, yeah, uh, I can, I can get you way more than $3,000. So like I gave her a shot and like, I don't know, she had like some weird type of fetish for like drivers. Like she always wanted her drivers to come to where she had. Like she would like tell my driver, Hey, you can come stay a night at my crib. If you ever came to, came to my state or whatever, it was weird as fuck. And like, she was one of them white girls that like black guys. If I can imagine her, she probably had like a gold tooth in her mouth. She probably wore some baby fat jeans and some motherfucking fat form shoes or some shit like that. But long story short, she just wasn't getting the job done. Like, and she always had excuses of, and onto why she into why she couldn't give me the amount of money that I asked for or, or loads. Period. She would leave my driver out there for days, maybe even hours, waiting for the, our next load. And uh, the most money she ever got me was like twenty six hundred dollars. And I just got to the point where I was like, damn, like this is not going to work. So one day I actually was like, fuck, and let me call the broker myself for the first time. And for my first load, I got a load from Houston, Texas, going to North Carolina. And I got $1,300 for that load. For my first time calling a broker, and I was like, yo, clearly this dispatcher that I have has been bullshitting. And I realized, damn, if I'm gonna, if my business is going to fail, it's, gonna, it's not going to fail, be, fail because of somebody else. It's going be, to fail because of something I did, if that makes sense. Now, if you do find a dispatcher that's valid, uh, try to give them like a one to two week trial period. See if they can actually uh, get to the goal that you uh, set for them. You know what I'm saying? If they do, man, keep them. Like, uh, kudos to you. You feel me? But if you, I really feel as though if you have one truck, you should really dispatch yourself. You would save a lot of money. Like, say I pay her two twenty five. You multiply that by fifty two weeks in a year. I was gonna pay her over twelve thousand dollars just to bullshit me. So keep that in mind. The more, the more. The more you can do it for yourself, the more money you will save. This is very important. You always need to make sure you put back funds for your fuel, man. You will use a lot of fuel going to uh, load to load. You know what I'm saying? If it's your first time starting off, I feel as though you need to put back around eight to $900 just for that reason. 
because when you drop off loads, you will get paid every single day and you do not want to dig into your profits just to keep fueling your truck because basically you're working to fill your truck up every day. You feel me? So you always want to be ahead of that. And like I said, um, if when I, when I, now what I do, because when I started off, I was wild. Like I didn't care. I was just used to everything that I made and I just get my driver, uh, send him money so he can fill, uh, fill the truck up and like. It, w it was affecting me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had to, like, be smarter and be like, okay, well, now I'm going to start putting back three to $400. So when I go into the next week, I will already have that money put aside for fuel. And so I don't have to dig into my profits as much to, to fill my truck up. So make sure you always have enough funds put back so you can fill your truck up at all times, you know what I'm saying? You do not want to dig into your profits because there's no point this in that. next obstacle that you might face might be the thing that might hinder you or discourage you from wanting to keep going. It is maintenance issues. Now, I know when you're driving on the road, you see sometimes you see 18-wheelers or different trucks on the side broke down. It's out of their control. You feel me? This is out of your control. Your truck will break down no matter what because you're driving thousands of miles and you're putting work into it. So, it eventually, it's going to break down. Whether it's a flat tire, it's a drive shaft that fell out, whether it's a... Uh, motherfucking electro electrical problems like something will happen to your truck and you need to be prepared and by being prepared you need to put back money every week for this reason so if you're making four thousand dollars a week try to put back at least three hundred dollars one week four hundred the next week five hundred the next week two hundred the next week make sure that you always put in some money back so when you do face this issue it doesn't affect you because you already prepared for it now i was not prepared i was a wild boy like i said like i would have my I wouldn't care because I was just like, yo, let's get to the money. And one day my driver called me. He's in Louisiana. And he's like, Jay, man, uh, something fell off the bottom of the truck. I'm like, damn. And it happened to be the drive shaft. Now, the roadside assistant people, they're going to charge you two to $300 just for coming out there, period. Then he charged me for parts and labor. And that ended up costing me $800. Now, week, my truck made $4,100. And I ended up taking $800 off of that just to fix that. So that left me with $3,300. Then I had to pay my driver, so I ended up only coming home with $2,100 that week. Now, if I would have put that $800 back and I already had that shit prepared for a situation like that, that $800 would have went to the $2,100 that I, went, that I came home with, and I would have had shit, $2,900 profit. But because I was irresponsible and wasn't prepared for it, it hindered, it hindered me, you know what I'm saying? And just think about if you always do that and your truck constantly breaking down and you're not prepared for it, eventually you're going to start going into the negative and going to the negative trying to trying to catch up to fix your truck and you do not want to do that, man. Now, I know some of you guys are like, God damn, Jay, you don't sound like I'm going to make a profit with all the funds you're telling me to put back. <laughs> That's why I told you guys in the first video that I did, hey, if this is your first truck that you're starting out with, you should drive yourself for the first month or two. That means you can, you're can you going to make way more money to, to stack up and put back for these issues that you might face. Not only that, it's going to it's gonna help you uh, get a new truck in a lesser time, a less amount of time. Meaning if a, if your first truck do break down, you still have your second truck to, uh, to fall back on to make sure you can pay for the maintenance issues for your first truck so you can get back on the road. Now, if you do require a driver, don't don't be like, damn, like I'm going to fail. No, you're still going to make money. This is a cash cow industry. You're still going to make over $100,000 a year. It's just going to take you a little more time than what it than what it would if you were driving yourself to get to your next truck and then your next truck and your next truck. You feel me? So if I can go back in time, no disrespect to my driver, I would have driven myself for the first month or two because I see all the benefits that would have came out of, out of stacking up those first two months by myself. You feel me? Now... I went through this shit, and I want you guys to be prepared. And if, like I said, if I can go back in time, I would change it. So I, I, I basically want you guys to have a better startup than what I did. That's basically what I'm saying, man. So don't let this shit discourage you or, or you feel like you're not going to make a profit. You still will make a profit at the end of the week by putting back these funds. These funds are very important to pick, put back. So don't think that you can, like, try to cut corners because it will fuck you up in the long run. You feel now, me? The last thing I want to talk about is booking bows. Booking loans is going to be very important to your success. Now, you should not settle for less than a dollar a mile for a rate. Meaning, if you call a broker and it's a load going that's 700 miles away, the less amount of money you should take for that load is $700. Now, me, when I call a broker, normally, most of the time, they'll ask you, hey, what, what type of load are you, what type of rate are you looking for? Like, I always go for the gusto, meaning I always throw out the biggest amount of numbers. So if I know I'm driving 700 miles, I'm going to ask them for 1,200. Hey, I take this for 1,200. 
most of the time they might say, uh, I don't know, but some might say, yeah, I got it. You can do it. We can do it for 1200 Depends on how important the load is. is. Uh, but most of the time they might be like, well, I can I don't have 1200 on it, but uh, I can maybe meet you at 850 And that's when you'd be like, uh, how about 925 You try to, You still try to go down, but you still try to make sure you get the most of that load. They might be like, okay, well, I can't do 925 Can I meet you at 900 like, Okay, cool. Now, not only did you get your dollar amount, you still made way more money than they try to offer you at first. So make sure you never sell for a dollar amount because these brokers will try to fuck you. It might be a situation where they charging you uh, three hundred dollars to go six hundred miles. If they can't, if you can't speak, uh, if you can't uh, talk them up on that uh, rate. Hang up on them. Don't hang up on them. But like, be like, okay, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna look for something else. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't trip because there's other lows out there that you can that you can book you feel me don't sell yourself short because you want to just book a load because you're panicking no it's okay hang up and just look for another load and go to the I next didn't one no your box truck can only take partial loads meaning you're going to hear a lot of brokers say that hey did you see that uh, it's a partial so it's going to be they want to pay you a partial rate we cannot take what an 18 wheeler can take we can take half of what they take so if you have a 26 foot box truck and you already have a load on your truck for that's 10 feet long for 700 dollars now, if, you, if you're satisfied with $700, making $700 that day, then that's fine. But me, I'm going to try to find a load that's close to where I'm at already, where I just picked up that 10 feet load from. And I'm going to try to find another one, maybe for five feet, that's paying $500 that's going into the same direction that I'm taking the 10 feet load to. You feel me? Because not only did I just maximize my uh, profit, I saved time. And, I, and, I, and, it, and it gave me more days to, out of the week to make more money, if that makes sense. So always try to maximize and use your whole uh, space in your, in your truck, you feel me? The more, the more shit you got in your truck, the more money you want right, to make. So one more thing, and I swear I'm done because I'm tired of talking. You want to build a relationship with your brokers, meaning you want to gain their trust. And the way that you gain their trust is by getting, getting the load from point A to point B in a safe and fast time, you feel me? They like that shit for some strange reason. Now, the more loads you do for them, the more they're going to put you up on a list as, as a person that they can depend on and, uh, to drop loads off for them. Now, it might be a situation where you're stuck in, like, Kansas somewhere, right? And you're on a load board and you can't find nothing to get you out of Kansas. So you might have to stay the night there and basically waste a whole day because you can't find a load. And because you build that relationship up with them, you might hit that broker up. Hey, Jake, Sally, uh, Daniel, whoever. Hey, I'm stuck out in Kansas, man. Like, I'm really trying to get out of here so I can go back home to Texas. Like, do you guys have any uh, loads on your on your load board that you can help me out with? Because they fuck with you so much, they're going to go to their personal load board. They might be like, yeah, Jay, I got something in uh, Wichita, Kansas going down to uh, to uh, Dallas, Texas, where you stay. Uh, not only did they just unstuck you, uh, get you from being stuck. They fucking put more money into your pockets when you wasn't supposed to make money that day because you couldn't find any loads on the load board. So not only did they help you out, they put more money into your pockets. That's how you build that relationship with your brokers. And eventually when you get uh, get more loads under your belt, when it comes down to that company, they're going to be like, oh shit, we really can depend on this guy. Let's make him dedicated. They're going to ask you to be dedicated. And when you become dedicated, that means you don't have to do shit. They're going to book loads for you every day with their company and all you gotta do is just sit back drop the load off and make money literally every day it's gonna be easy like that now with that being said i really hope that you guys gained something out of this video or i helped you out in some type of way if not man god damn forgive me man please now if you have any more questions for me hit me up on my social media i'm gonna to reply to you as soon as i possibly can now when you come face to face with these obstacles if you ever do just make sure it don't fuck with your head. It's just a test. It's just a hump that it's just a test and it's a hump that you definitely would get over and pass. You feel me? So so like I said, don't let it discourage you. As long as you prepare, you're gonna be great. But these are the keys to to making my box truck company successful, man. I hope it, it helped you out. And maybe in the future you might have your own keys to be successful and that you can share with somebody else, man. But with that being said, I wish you guys the best luck. Uh let's get to this money.